Today, we're going to be revisiting the prototype Too Fast Tactical Handguard. First off, I want to thank everyone for their contributions and their input on the prototype. I've made a few changes to this based on feedback that I had myself, as well as feedback from everybody who subscribes to my channel. One of the top uh, issues that people mentioned to me was the gap in the top rail. So first off, I want to mention that the, the full-length top rail as shown on this handguard is going to be an optional item. It's actually quite an expensive item when you factor it as a separate piece. So it, it's not going to be included with the price of the handguard. But if you are like me and you want a full-length top rail, uh, this is the workaround I have for this, the gap problem that we had. So previously, we had about a half inch gap right here in this area. And since this top rail is 14.5 inches in length, and to go longer than that would require a custom rail and a lot more money. That's just not feasible for this particular project. But what I did notice was that if I take the rail and turn it around, we get almost a flush alignment right here with the upper rail of the uh, receiver. So what we can do in this situation is mount it two ways. You can mount it flush to the upper receiver or mount it flush to the end of the handguard. The end of the handguard, um, you can see here there's going to be a gap because obviously this rail is a uh, half inch too short. Having the gap at the front uh, is not as uh, problematic as it is in the rear. Um, and you can see that um, there will be an extra hole at the front. Uh, of the handguard, which I just uh, put a, a bolt in there to fill the hole. So that's going to be the workaround for the top rail um, on this 15 inch handguard. Moving on to the next issue was uh, that was um, the most popular was the issue with the bolts. And this was something I noticed right away as well when I, I got the first prototype uh, rails in. Um, although these bolts, they are a grade 8 bolt, they're a nice looking bolt, um, and they are a quality bolt, they're, they're too big to allow the crossbar of most accessories to mount. Now with a big long rail like this, uh, you can probably work around that by just moving your accessory. But when we drop down to like the 2 inch rail, the 2 inch rail has two bolts on it, and you really need to have both of those bolts on the two inch rail to get it securely mounted to the handguard. And that definitely creates mounting issues with sights and flashlights and so on. So let me show you what I've got for a fix for that. Okay, due to the length of the, this upper receiver with this handguard on it, I'm just gonna work back here in this area. Um, I took off the front sight, and you can see that this front sight, like, like most rail-mounted accessories, there's a pin on there. Um, the pin is definitely not going to work if I was to place it next to this bolt because of the side. Now what we have are upgraded grade 8 bolts with a substantially smaller head on them. So let's go ahead and take one of these out. Now the uh, Allen wrench that comes with the kit here also fits the new bolts, so there won't be an additional wrench that's needed. And these bolts as well come with a little bit of uh, thread locker on them. And you can see they are substantially smaller. And there we go. So now you can mount your sight or any other type of railed accessory um, right where a screw is. So this is important 
mainly on the two inch rails, um, but it, it'll definitely come into play probably on the four inch rail as well. So all of the new um, rails that uh, will be included with these hand guards will include the smaller bolts and the larger bolts will no longer be included. So that takes care of the bolt issue with the hand guard. Now, let's move on and talk about the last issue um, which had to do with the actual barrel nut. Okay, moving along. Um, if you watched the original video where I installed this new prototype handguard, you might have noticed I had uh, some issues with the uh, proprietary barrel nut. And the, the issue basically lies in the fact that uh, although you look at you may look at this and say, oh yeah, a regular castle nut wrench will fit it, I have uh, the Magpul castle nut wrench here. And you can see that you can use a regular castle nut wrench. But uh, one thing you'll notice right off the bat is the nubs on a regular castle nut wrench are really too short for this type of uh, barrel nut and the wrench itself doesn't fit the barrel nut exactly um, so the diameter is off a smidgen and then the nubs are actually too short now if all you have is a standard castle nut wrench that's similar to this with three nubs on it you can make it work but in the grand scheme of things, you want the proper tool to do the job right. Now, if you notice on this particular tool, you see how the nubs on this go all the way through? This is going to provide the best gripping source uh, or gripping surface to torque this nut down properly. Now, this particular tool, I did contact the manufacturer and address this issue with them. They provided me with this tool. This is a tool that's going to ship with my hand guards. So, when you go to install this particular handguard, you're going to have the right tool. Your torque wrench will go right there. Um, so you're not going to have um, leverage variances due to where the torque wrench is placed. Torque wrench is pretty going to be placed pretty close to the end right there. And this is an exact fit. Now this particular tool also addresses, um, I believe this particular uh, end of it is for 308 barrel nuts of similar nature as of this. So this this is another upgrade um, that I requested for inclusion with my hand guards due to the fact that standard armor's tools are not 100% fit and I'm not real comfortable especially trying to, to you know put 30 30 plus foot pounds of torque um, on a barrel nut with an improper tool. Okay, so now the last thing on the agenda, I know I mentioned there was only one more, but there's actually two more. If you recall in the previous video, this is the outer alignment ring here. And part of the process for um, torquing down the barrel nut is to get your gas tube channel aligned correctly with your upper receiver. And you'll recall that I was using a, this is a standard, uh, alignment pin, a gas tube uh, alignment pin for barrel nuts. Now if you notice, this moves around quite a bit. And that's because the hole in this alignment ring is, well, I hate to say much bigger, but it's, it's, it's pretty large for what it needs to be. And what happens is when you're torquing down this barrel nut, you're trying to get 30 plus foot pounds of torque on it. And even though you have this alignment ring in place and you torque this down and you hit 30 foot pounds of torque, because of this small amount of movement, this alignment ring actually will move a little bit and then you can't pull this out. And if you watch the video, you saw me kind of deal with that. Um, I fixed it off camera, of course, because uh, uh, there was a lot of profanity involved and didn't want to expose you to that. Now what I've done is I've actually measured this hole right here, um, this uh, alignment channel, and it's actually about five millimeters, which is kind of an odd size 
on a firearm that doesn't have anything metric on it. So um, what I did was I picked up some five millimeter uh, bar stock and this fits perfect. So there's virtually no wiggle on this at all. So this as an alignment tool is something I'm going to include with each upper receiver. This, well, we'll see later in the video, but this should allow us to torque our barrel nut down and keep this outer alignment ring uh, from moving. And once we get our barrel nut torqued down, we should be able to slide this out and then our gas tube will slide right in through this channel right into your upper receiver. So there won't be any alignment issues or issues removing this particular tool. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work yet because I have not tried it. Um, I've done the, the test fitting here um, and the test fitting is good. Um, I'm not sure if the end of this is actually going to slide into the upper receiver at this point. I may have to do some modification to that. So we'll see that uh, in a little bit when I uh, get around to um, um, uh, trying the new tool and um, this alignment tool. And that will be coming up shortly. Well, I figure since I have my caliper out here, uh, for reference purposes, let's go ahead and see if I can show you. You can see that this new rod that I have here is 4.98 millimeters. The uh, standard alignment tool that you would use uh, comes out to be Let's see, 4.55, that's millimeters. It's actually not in millimeters, it's in inches. So it's, there we go, 0.18. So you can see there, there is a, a substantial size difference between these two. Okay, we're back with the upper receiver in the workbench. Uh, I've got it stripped apart. I've got a new um, barrel nut here. Uh, for reference, if you, this is a standard uh, gas tube alignment pin. And you can see how much wiggle we have right there with this one. I believe it's a 3 uh, alignment pin. The five millimeter pin, or the alignment pin that I have, um, five millimeter, fits this upper alignment uh, nut just fine, but it won't go into the upper receiver. So what I've done is on this end, I've actually taken it to my uh, bench grinder and I've grinded off um, about one inch of length, just enough so this will slide into the upper receiver. So you can see there's virtually no wiggle on this. Now, ideally, it would be nice if this particular rod had some sort of a curvature to it so you could hook it or take a hammer and tap it out if it's tight. Um, but these are, um, these are some sort of a, well, some sort, they're a, a stainless steel uh, bar stock. So I, I tried to bend one of these and it just snapped. So um, with this in place like so, I'm hoping I can get 30 foot pounds of torque on it and still get this out because there just isn't anything to grip onto. Um, this shouldn't move a whole lot, but we'll, I guess we'll just have to see. All right, let's get, uh, let's get to it. Actually, before we get to torquing, before we get to torquing, sort of like torquing, let me put a little bit of grease on this. Maybe that'll make it easier to pull out. Of course, what'll most likely happen is it will make it so slick I won't be able to grip a hold, get a good grip on it. Okay, uh, torque wrench, 30 foot pounds of torque. Our uh, proprietary tool, 
and we are going to get it lined up and the tool of course fits perfect and I'm going to use my second hand just to hold it so it doesn't pop out of place and look at that this tool works excellent uh, for reference you can see this is the the barrel nut I took off of here and you can see in some of these areas you can see where the edges are deformed that was directly due to the fact I was using the Magpul wrench and the nubs that, come, that are on the Magpul wrench, like previously mentioned, are really not long enough to get inside of this and get a good grip on it. So it ends up deforming the outer edges of it. So the, the tool that um, this specifically designed for this barrel nut obviously works perfect. All right. Now we want to see if we can get this out uh, without loosening the barrel nut. Now using a bench grinder to shave off some of the material on this is not the pre preferred way to uh, uh, shave off some of the material. Ideally a lathe would be perfect to uh, mill off and get a nice edge on the material. A bench grinder is kind of, uh, the only thing I have around here is a bench grinder. I don't have a lathe, so that's what we ended up using. And this is still a little bit tight after torquing down the barrel nut. So let's see if we can get a little bit of a wiggle on this and slide it out. go a little bit of wiggling and a little bit of grease um, still more effort than I would like but this is a lot better than what it was before before to get this out I actually had to, to loosen up the or back off the barrel nut just a smidgen and I didn't want to do that I don't want to compromise the torque on the barrel nut here so the new tool is working pretty good Okay, now with the tool out, our barrel nut torqued down, let's just go back to the gas tube. Make sure we've got our gas tube alignment good. Um, you know, it's stopping because of this other tool I have in here, but it looks good with our gas tube. So, I'm going to keep working on this alignment tool. Um, obviously this alignment tool is the first prototype. I'm gonna keep working on this. And hopefully when these hand guards ship, um, I will have a little bit better perfected tool to include with this. Obviously you saw I didn't have to put a whole lot of effort into removing the alignment tool. I did not have to compromise the torque on the barrel nut and our gas tube aligns just perfectly. So that's the update for this 15 inch too fast tactical uh prototype handguard stay tuned uh for the actual production units uh which will be coming soon and they will be available on my website soon if you're interesting interested in pre-ordering definitely leave me a comment um we can we can discuss pre-orders uh, on these uh, handguards thank you